Yesterday, HBO pulled Gone with the Wind from its lineup of movies. It's now forbidden. In Dallas, the city government removed a statue of the Texas Ranger. Meanwhile, NPR, National Public Radio, which you pay for, recently promoted a piece urging readers to, quote, decolonize their bookshelves and discard colonialist ideas that pervaded the American psyche for so long. So here we have censoring movies, ripping down statues, encouraging book burning. What does that have to do with police brutality? Well, nothing. These are attacks on our shared history and our culture. This is a topic worth discussing, and there's no one worth discussing it more with than the great Mark Stein. He rejoins us tonight for the first time in three months. Mark Stein, would you mind holding up today's newspaper to establish that it is, in fact, you and not a hologram? I'd love to hold up today's newspaper, but it went out of business six weeks into the pandemic <laughs> when they quarantined. They quarantined all the newspaper boys because the best way to get COVID is by throwing the infected newspaper onto your neighbor's doorstep. So that's all over, Tucker. You got to keep up. We've missed you, Mark. So what you, you're watching all of this from seclusion. None of this seems to have anything to do with police brutality. What's going on? Well, to, to, uh, to, to go to the theme you've been talking about tonight and last night, where are the people who will defend this? You can't have a culture war if one side refuses to turn up. On the politics, on the looting, on the rioting, uh, the Republican Party and conservatives have been largely silent. And similarly, on the culture war, they've, uh, the other side has been largely silent. People, it's not, it's not the young snowflake generation who are easily triggered. It's the middle-aged guys running HBO uh, and these other corporations. Why are they not defending this? They've made millions off of Gone with the Wind. Uh, if people don't like it, fine. If that's not your take on the antebellum South, make your own movie, write your own novel, do your own play about the antebellum South. But don't demand uh, that things be abolished simply because uh, they weren't made with the peculiar uh, narcissistic sensibilities of uh, 2020 in mind. So our entire culture exists digitally now. It's very difficult to get rid of all copies of Catcher in the Rye. It's very easy to eliminate an e-book. Right. You can do it in a keystroke. Should we be worried about erasing our culture, our past, our civilization? Absolutely. You, you say uh, digitally they're easy to find. I'm not so sure. We may be at the beginning of one of those uh, dystopian tales where in a few years' time somebody stumbles across the last rusting video cassette recorder in exactly. the woods uh, and there happens to be a tape of Gone with the Wind and they stick it in and they marvel at it because they've never seen this before. They, this generation is a hyper-present tense generation and unfortunately it's determined to destroy everything it doesn't understand, which is quite a lot. So I just have to ask you about your whereabouts. Now, you sent word to our staff that you were in a cave in Kandahar, but I noticed that you're tan, so I, I don't think you really were. Where have you been? You can get a great tan in a cave in Kandahar. Uh, I'm, I was a very low-ranking jihadist, so I didn't qualify for the executive latrine. Uh, but actually, property is incredibly reasonable in Helmand province uh, these days, <laughs> Tucker. If you're thinking of somewhere to flee to. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, let's, let's be honest. When the powder keg goes up, the cave in Kandahar will be looking pretty good. Uh, I'm, I, I, if, I, if I'd come back last month, Tucker, I would have done lockdown shtick. If I'd come back last week, I would have done looting shtick. Uh, but right now, I'm looking for the neither of the above box, because a choice between either uh, being locked down in every aspect of your life or being allowed the run of the streets, uh, because white supremacy is an even greater public health crisis than COVID, uh, I, I, I'm looking for the neither of the above box in those two choices. I'm not surprised to learn that, unlike the rest of us, you figured out a better way to live. Someday I, I hope to find out what exactly it was. Mark Stein, again, we're very glad to have you back. Thank you.